Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and the Zenith 750 Super Duty build. Now, just like I did with the brake lines, I've been working with Steve at Aircraft Specialty to come up with a very nice, simple, clean fuel line installation for the Super Duty. Well, that's what we're going to install today. I have laid out here on the workbench some of the parts that come with the kit from Aircraft Specialty. Now, there's a lot missing from this picture because a lot of it I've already have installed in the airplane, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. But there are, per side, there are two lines per side. So this is going to be the passenger side fuel lines that run in the cockpit. The other ones, the pilot side, I actually already have installed. And then you'll have these lines connect up here to this very, very nice Newton fuel selector valve. And it does come with all the banjo fittings and everything that you're going to need. And we have the line going from the fuel selector to the firewall, which is this line right here. So you'll have one of these fuel selector valve with all the banjo fittings. You're gonna have four fuel lines. And now I'll show you the parts that are installed in the airplane. All right, we're starting at the wing route here. This is where the fuel line from the wing will connect to the fuselage. So it goes in here and this is a 90 degree elbow fitting. That fuel line, comes down here through be kind of behind this little bulkhead or this channel. And you can see that it comes out the bottom. It goes over here to the center console. And there's another elbow fitting there, which you can see right there. And then this fuel line comes forward up here to the fuel selector valve. So I have the pilot side all installed. And now I'm going to show you how to install it on the right side or the passenger side. For the installation on the passenger side of the airplane, we're gonna start up here at the top and work our way forward towards the fuel selector valve. So the first thing we wanna do is position our elbow fitting here. Now, you want this to be as high as possible so that it fits inside the wing, but not too high to where it's cutting into this long, longer on or longer on which you can see from the inside of the airplane there. You don't want to cut into that. So the bottom of the wing is going to come somewhere kind of like this. And depending on exactly how you position your wing and exactly where you drill this, this may stick out a little bit below the wing. In fact, that's how it is on my cruiser. So you can see on my cruiser, this is the nut that's on that fitting. And it sticks out just a hair below the bottom of the wing. So I just notched out, this is actually an access plate on the bottom of the wing. Uh, but so anyway, you want this as high as you can, but if you go too low, then it'll stick out the bottom. So obviously this little pilot hole right here is the hole that I drilled for that elbow fitting. And you can look at the measurements here, but let's do this on the right side of the airplane, step by step. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a line in between two of these holes. So you can look at which two holes I'm drawing a line between and do this on your airplane. Next, I will measure down 1.263 inches from the top of the skin. And I'll make a little mark there. Now, from that line that I drew between the two rivets, I'm gonna come over 0.9785 inches and make a little, another little mark. That is where I'm going to drill the hole. All right, here's the elbow fitting that gets installed in the side of the fuselage. And we wanna drill the hole large enough to fit this little lip that's on there uh, through the hole. And if I just take my calipers here and put it on here, it looks like about 0.5595 is the diameter of the hole we're going to drill. And I'll just find the appropriate step on the step drill and drill through the side with a step drill. And we wanna make sure after we drill that hole to deburr both sides of that hole, the inside and the outside. Now when we put this through the fuselage, it rests in this little lip on here. And you'll see the thickness of this lip is much thicker than the skin of the fuselage. And what that means is if we put the nut on here, we can tighten down the nut until it hits that lip. But since it's the fuselage skin is thinner, this will just rotate and it won't be tight in the skin. I think what you'll find is on the outside of the skin, 
you're going to need to install two washers under the nut. And you'll see on the left side of my airplane, I have the two washers under the nut. The thickness of the two washers is, takes up the thickness of the mounting tab on here, and that lets me tighten the nut on there, and that's really tight on the airplane now. All right, now that this elbow fitting is installed, and a nut is on here just finger tight because obviously I'm going to take this out to paint the airplane. On the inside of the fuselage, I have another elbow fitting down here. That's the straight part. And on the inside is the elbow. You can see the left side here I already have installed. So that one's done. And you'll notice this one here is loose for now because I don't want to tighten this nut yet because I don't know the exact angle where I'm going to need this. I'll have to wait until I connect the fuel line. This is that elbow fitting I just showed you, and I took it out of the plane to connect it up to the fuel line because I figured it's a lot easier to tighten this out here on the workbench than it would be in the airplane. On all my fuel fittings, this is what I use on the threads to seal the, the fittings. There's probably other products you can use too, but that's what I use. So now this line is ready to install. A little note here about the routing of the fuel lines. You can see on the pilot side here where it comes in through the bulkhead, there's that 90 degree elbow fitting. The fuel line comes up and forward to the fuel selector valve. But I wanted to point out that I have an Adele clamp here holding it close to the side of the bulkhead. And this string that I have here is the uh, rudder cable. And so you can see it, it just about barely clears the rudder cable. But what I'm going to do here is if you guys have ever built the radio controlled airplanes, you remember the blue and yellow push rods from Carl Goldberg? That's the company that makes the, the plastic tubing they use for uh, push rods. Uh, I, before, when I, before I swage on the ends of these cables, I'll slide those plastic tubes over this rudder cable. So if it does happen to touch here, it's protected by the plastic. So, uh, that might be something you guys want to search for at your local hobby shop. All right, guys, it's been a little while for me. I've been away. I went to Oshkosh and came home and went to work for a while. Now I'm home and ready to finish up the fuel line installation on the Super Duty. Now, what was cool this year at Oshkosh is I've been working with Steve at Aircraft Specialties, you guys probably know, for, for a long time now on the brake lines and the fuel lines for this airplane. And we've had a lot of communication back and forth over the phone and on email, but I've never got to meet them. Uh, so I finally got to meet them this year in person at Oshkosh. I went to visit their booth, which was down on the south side of the field in the ultralight area. And I wish I would have had some footage of it because they had a lot of really nice displays there uh, with samples of what they can do with, with all their different size brake lines and fuel lines. They had samples of instrument panels that were powder coated and it had all the labeling silk screened. Um, they had all the different fittings and things like that for their hoses. And it was just neat to see, you know, the, the variety of, of what they can actually do. Um, so anyway, that, that was cool. It was nice to meet Steve. I'm back here now, ready to finish up the fuel lines. Well, being away for a couple weeks did give me the opportunity to get these blue plastic sleeves ordered. And you can see here where they cross, the cables won't rub on each other. They're surrounded by the plastic tube. And that goes all the way back here. If they should happen to hit the fuel line, then they are protected by the, the tube. Uh, the only thing I have to do now is there's, there's two of them on here to make them long enough. I just have to figure out how to get the tube locked onto the line so it doesn't slide all the way back. But anyway, this is what the lines will look like if you wanna to go to your local hobby shop and order them. They fit real nice on the cable and they look kind of cool too. Since we're up front here, I can show you I have this line installed it goes from the fuel selector over down here. There is a clamp holding it nicely in place. And from there, it goes forward to the firewall. And from this side here, you can see where it goes to. There's the fuel line here, and it goes up to the firewall. Now this fitting right here, it's kind of like a bulkhead fitting for the gascalator. 
Uh, I ordered this from Aircraft Spruce, and here is the part number for this piece here if you want to use the same thing. It does work pretty nicely. I have the same thing in my cruiser, and it works nicely for the Super Duty too. One other thing I wanted to point out is the position of where I mounted the fuel selector. The center of this fuel selector is four and one quarter inches from the very back of this aluminum piece. So if you measure up four and a quarter inches and then center it, uh, you can position this in such a way that all of these fuel lines fit together. Now, as you guys know, there's always more than one way to do something. And you can see down here, I ran that fuel line behind this unpainted piece of aluminum and then it comes out the top. You could just as easily uh, bolt it to the outside of that aluminum piece too. I just like to hide mine inside. Now to run it behind this aluminum piece and have it come out, I did cut a big slot in here. And that's pretty simple to do. I just drilled two holes with my unibit and then uh, cut out between them and then you get a nice slot here. I did make it large enough so that I can also fit some wires that go behind there. And on the other side, there's some pedostatic lines that I might run in there also. Well, for now, that finishes things up inside the cockpit for me. The next step is to paint some of the unpainted aluminum pieces and then I can button everything up and start riveting things together. If you wanna order this fuel line system from Aircraft Specialty, their link or information is below. You can also check out the brake line system they offer. And just to let you guys know, once I do install the Lycoming engine, we're going to work together to come up with a firewall forward package that includes the oil lines and fuel lines ahead of the firewall. So that should be pretty helpful too. I hope the whole video was informative for you. Uh, thanks for following along. Uh, if you don't mind, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I guess I'll see you on the next update for the Xena Super Duty.